YouTube. So today I'm back with another video and today we're going to be taking it OG style and we're just going to do a regular mukbang. I have my dominoes. Um, I just put everything in a plate because my family got it like for everyone. So I just put my stuff in a plate. I got my Bev. I got some ginger ale. And basically on Instagram I asked you guys to ask me questions or just questions for like um, a girls talk kind of video. Of course anybody could watch this but y'all came in through with the questions alright. Um... Some of them is spicy. Some of them is just like, what? Like, some of the stuff y'all was telling me, I was like, girl, leave that man. But anyways, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to put my hair up first because I go crazy when I eat, all right? By the way, I just want to say, if you guys are not already, don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe, duh, and like this video. But don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. I will be listed down below. Alright, so the first question is, is it bad to not tell your partner immediately when you're having a pregnancy scares? Alright, so we just went straight into the tea, alright? Um, let me eat, for, let me take a bite first. Mm. 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 Alright, you see, I knew y'all was not about to tell me I had a little blur spot on my camera. Anyways, though, it depends on your partner because, like... When you meet immediately, like, do you mean, like, you just had sex and, like, a few days later you're like, oh, I think I'm pregnant? Because then that's just childish, you feel me? Like, don't get me wrong, I had a little toxic moment or whatever, but it's like, it ma make it make sense, sis, you know what I mean? Like, if you only miss your period by, like, a day or two, like, that, you don't really need to tell him, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, you could wait, like, a week or, like, honestly, the most responsible thing to do, like, for example, if you're, like, a few days late on your period is, babe, I haven't got a pregnancy test yet, but... You know, I'm late, so I'm just letting you know. So, it's like, you know, it's kind of still like a pregnancy scares. You haven't really got tested, but you just want to know, like, um, it might be coming. I don't want you to be shocked, baby, okay? So, the second thing I got is, what do you do when you feel like giving up? So, this is actually a really good question. Mm, 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 mm. So, what I do when I feel like I'm giving up? Honestly, and it really depends on your religion, but I like to pray. I love talking to God when I feel, like, unmotivated and stuff because I feel like even if it takes time, he really answers me. Um, so that's personally what I do when I feel like giving up. I also try to just give myself, like, positive words, like, I can do this. Um, just stuff like that. Like, I don't really know. More for me, like, a mental thing. Like, I just try to get my head out of it, and then I just try to do what I need to do instead of giving up. But I feel like, especially being in quarantine and stuff like that, is way harder than it seems. The next question I got is, how do you move on from a toxic relationship? Baby. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not even going to lie. Am I the best person to answer this question? Of course not. But. I'm going to give you advice like, about talking to my girls, right? It's really hard. You really probably won't know until you hit a point where you, like, fed up and you just end up going. Like, I can't really give advice on that, like. I can't say, though, if you know it's toxic, I think the sooner you know, the better. So, that's more of, like, a try to look for red flag. Not try to look, but, like, if you see red flags, like, make sure you acknowledge them. Because most of the time, it's only going to get worse, you understand? So, to get out of a toxic relationship, I would just say pray a lot. Really just try to, like, mentally get yourself out of, like, okay, I love him. And he's, like, try to cut out the excuses you make for someone. That's really going to be the biggest thing on how to get over someone. Because then you're, like, oh, like, ew. Like, you start getting turned off when you really look at it, like, damn, like, he really can't do this or she really can't do that. So, that's probably the biggest thing I can say of how to get out of a toxic relationship. Mm -mm -mm. Second question. I mean, I don't even know what number one. <laughs> Next question I got is, how do you feel about second chances? I'm going to be honest with y'all. If you know know me, I'm definitely a firm believer in second chances or third chances or fourth chances. Um, but like I said, I'm going to give y'all advice through knowledge. Um, it's good to give second chances. I actually really don't think it's a bad thing. Some people are like, no, bitch. Like, you mess up once, he's gone or she's gone. And I personally don't feel like that, especially for the age that I'm in. I feel like people make mistakes. People are still growing into themselves, and you want them to act perfect for you? They don't even know what they're doing with their life. 
But if you want to get it figured out just because they met you, who are you? Who are you, bro? Honestly. But you have to really, I feel like there's um certain things. Like, there's certain things you know that you will never tolerate. Like, me, I'm very big on second chances because as of, like, what I've experienced with people... It's like where I feel like I can still try to move with them and grow with them. That's why I feel like I give chances. But like something I, for example, everyone's different. Me, I don't tolerate cheating. I feel like if you cheat on me, like there's no second chance coming from that. Because it's like, I probably already forgave you for stuff before that. So it's like, the fact that you could cheat on me, it's like, alright, so now you want to see me in my grave. Like now you hate, like you want to kill me. You understand? Like, I, like anybody who's been in a relationship with me or like talk to me, like I'm very loving. I'm very like... I'm a wifey-ass girlfriend. Like, I'm gonna just put it like that. It is what it is. I am. So, if you cheat on me, it's like, you really just don't respect me no, no more at that point. But, um, I feel like age plays a big part on forgiving. Because it's like, y'all 18, 19. And y'all be wanting, like, really unrealistic-ass men. Like, y'all want them to be making six figures. Y'all want them to be doing this, do that. They could, You have to understand, men are like dogs. They're like dogs. Whether they want to admit it or not, you have to train them. Okay, now I'm not saying, oh, you need to make a guy um, be what you want or make him do this and this. No, because there are things that guys need to just, if they like you, they're going to do naturally. But at the same time, you can't expect someone to always read your mind. And me being in the relationship I'm in right now really taught me, like, communicating and knowing, like, each other, just not, like, about yourself. It really helps play in the relationship. Mm. This shit is so f***ing good, my God. Um, I don't know the specific situation. I just feel like you know who you're going to want to give a second chance to. And even if you mess up, that's life. Like, sometimes you give people chances that they don't deserve. That's life. Karma's going to always come back. God is going to always, like, put them in their place. And I think I'm really big on this subject because it's like, sometimes I feel like I do give people too many chances. Sometimes I feel like I don't. So it's like, it really depends how you feel about that person. Also, you have to pay attention to signs. Like, do, are they really sincere when they mess up? And you give them another chance. Or you keep giving them chances and they keep messing up and they keep not showing you a certain kind of respect. Like, it all plays a big part on giving a second chance. Next question was, what's one thing you hate when females do? Now, I got, I probably got a lot because I really, if you know me, I don't like people, period. But we're going to get take a bite of this nice wing. Mmm. Mmm-mm. Okay. One thing I really don't like what bitches do is when they try to act different when you with your man. Because it's like, why are, you, why are you changing your tone of voice? I don't understand. Like, why am I with my man? And before he even came, you sounded like fucking Pop Smoke smoking 10 blunts a day. And now you sound like an angel. Like, I don't understand. You sound like a 10-year-old. I don't get that. Now, I can say I really don't experience stuff like that because my friends know the vibes. I don't have no one fake around me or someone I don't trust. Real talk, if I can't trust you with my man, I probably don't trust you at all. Like, I'm not, you're probably not a close friend of mine because family and my significant other is always going to be top five, like, and God. Like, they're always going to be, like, the most important thing to me. So, it's like, if I don't trust you around them, I'm not really jacking you, you feel me? But, that's probably one thing when girls try to act different or, like, they be trying to embarrass you, like, tell you the most craziest stories in front of your man. Like, oh, you remember one time when you went da 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 Or they be trying to bring up ex vibes in front of your boyfriend. It's like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, why are you really fessing me up right now? I don't understand. I really hate females that do that. All right, so the next question I got was sucking tips. So clearly y'all don't want me to get paid for this video. Y'all want me to get yellow mark is what I'm hearing. Mmm. Um... You know what's crazy? I saw a post like this on Facebook. And some girl was like, oh, why are you giving me all the tips? Like, girl, bye. Like, I'm j I'm not going to get too descriptive because I really don't want this video to get yellow mark. All I have to say, though, is that there are a few basic things that make you decent or good. You know what I mean? You can always add things. You and your man might just be feeling like, yo, I want to try this. Like, and somebody else never heard of that. But the main things I would say is make sure you use one hand, two hands, no hands. You know, switch it around. Be fun with it. Make sure you do all that when it comes to the hands or no hands. 
um you gotta put a lot of spit even if you're not that good oh what am i saying before all of that don't put teeth that's probably the biggest way to take the biggest l of your life if you put teeth while you you know what i'm trying to say so definitely don't put teeth and then my third tip as of right now would just be put a lot of spit make it real sloppy happy 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 you know what i'm trying to say like that's probably like the biggest thing that's probably gonna take you you feel me? Even if you don't really know what you're doing, or if you're not really someone who likes to do no hands or two hands or whatever, if you just spit a lot and you really just, you know, it's gonna it's gonna flow. It's gonna be slippery. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be you you, you get some leverage after that. So make sure you spit, and that's probably the three things I could tell you. Like if you're a beginner and you want some tips, um, no teeth. Do the the three the three H's: hands, two hands, or no hands. Okay and spit next one was ways to protect yourself during sex so obviously the biggest thing is wear a condom i'm pretty sure you're talking about like stds and stuff like that um it's sad to say but honestly unless you have like the like the person's papers i really just recommend using a condom even if they tell you they're good or whatever because you never really know some people are either like in denial about certain things or just they think they'll never get nothing. So just make sure you always use a condom. And if you're not talking about, like, STDs and stuff like that, I would definitely say, like, protect yourself during sex, as in, like, yourself, your kitty cat. Make sure you pee. Make sure you wipe yourself after you are done because that can lead to um, yeast infections, uh, UTIs, and stuff like that. So just make sure you take care of yourself down there when you are done with the nasty. And you shouldn't even be doing the nasty, girl. So, my friend said, what's considered too crazy when you're in a relationship? Honestly, nothing. I, I really can't. I think besides, like, killing them and maybe stabbing them, like, that's probably crazy. But I, I'm, I'm pretty much a crazy girl. I, I do classify, like, as probably, like, crazy or whatever, whatever that means. Um, and I feel like if you do certain things, certain consequences will happen, and that's on period. So, you digging your own grave. Like, am I really too crazy or you just really don't know how to act? And now... I'm acting crazy. Period. Next one was, I like this boy and we was flirting or whatever. And then out of nowhere, he ghosted me. So what I have to say to that is let that man go. If you want to ghost you, let him. Bye. Bye, who are you? Nobody. Nobody. Literally nobody. So who are you? You think you're going to ghost me? You would have thought. So the next one was, how do you get ready for an interview for a job? So I'm going to keep it cute, keep it simple, keep it sweet. Um, um, tip number one, just make sure you wear something on the formal side. Now, a lot, depending on the job, then you do casual, formal. But at the end of the day, no matter what job, you, like when I went to write it, I had a whole like, like button up shirt and like slacks. Like they're just going to always look at you like more on the professional side and it's always going to give you a one up. Make sure you always have a second copy of your resume because you're going to look very well prepared and all and like believe me having a little folder with your with an extra resume cuz they already have it. But if you have another one, that's key. Also, um yeah, honestly dressing good and make sure you practice like just certain regular questions like oh how are you with customers if this happens or this happens and just be prepared that's all i can say how do you come confident in your body so i'm actually on this journey right now of how to be confident in my body and the biggest thing i've been doing during this quarantine is telling myself self affirmations like i swear because i have two mirrors every time i pass my mirror i tell myself something or i'll be like yo you look good or like oh yeah your waist is going in or your butt is big like i'd be really gassing myself up and certain days I don't because I get into like a depressed mode and stuff and it's hard. It's really hard to gain confidence like within yourself, period. But also your body if that's at least for me something I struggle with my whole life. Like I've never been a skinny girl. Like if anything like now I'm starting to gain like weight. But like when I was little I was big and then I was like growing into my body. Like probably from like 7th to like sophomore junior year. Like I was actually like a nice like slim thick. So I was going into it. Now I'm getting big again. But um yeah it's hard and girl you just gotta keep telling yourself like you you know what the thing is though like you should if you really feel like you want to make a change like now i'm getting into working out
I don't even know when my camera died. I'm just going to go based on the why do girls suspect that you're supposed to know what's wrong with them. Long story short, just honestly study your girl. And sometimes girls just have a tendency of doing that. And, like, we really mad about nothing that deep. That's probably why I can't figure it out. And the best advice I could tell you is you just got to really study them and, and just kind of know. Or, like, be like, babe, like, what's the problem? Like, what? why you didn't tell me? Or why you think I should know? And then slowly, like, they'll probably start communicating with you more. And you'll reach a point where, honestly, if they mad, they'll just tell you you mad. You know, like, that's really the goal. So the last one I got was self-love. And I will be doing a whole different video on confidence and self-love because I feel like that is a video for itself. Because I'm still going through that. Um, and I'm still trying to um, have confidence in myself all the way. And, ooh. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that'll be a different video. All I can say, though, is that if you are struggling with self-love, I will say just please do positive affirmations. The same thing with body confidence. It's really a mind game, and you have to, like, really just almost gas yourself up. The, the best time to do this is when you're single because you really almost have to start moving cocky. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? And it could be hard when you have a significant other because you really got to be like, yo, like, I deserve this. I'm this. I look like this. I'm bomb. So if you are single, I feel like that's the best time. But even if you're not single, you can still do it. Um, I'm not single and I'm still doing it right now. It's just like sometimes you could lose track or like you have to dim stuff down just because you don't want to seem too cocky or whatever or like... It's just different, but I just suggest that overall, y'all just give each other positive affirmations, and yeah, but I'm going to do a whole separate video for that. Alright, y'all, so this is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoy. I really like this, just talking. I'm not going to lie, like, I haven't had downloads in a minute, so it was hard for me to really answer these questions and not go crazy on my food, but I'll try to work on it next time. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!